It is October the 9th, 2023, uh, opening night, Tampa Bay Lightning. So, of course, that's what I'm going to talk about. Well, based on the title, you already know that's a farce. Uh, we are actually going to start reading this. All right. Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Uh, the last time I read anything uh, of any substance was... Tony Robbins, Money Master of the Game. And I read that on this channel looking like an absolute fool, which I will do once again here, okay? Um, I'd love to think that in my mind, I don't look like a fool as I'm trying to read uh, through this, but but I, inevitably, I probably will. I'm also not gonna filter out like my kids coming in and out. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm not gonna stop that like I would on my normal videos. There will probably be very little editing, so you're gonna hear all of my blunders. Uh, but I really don't wanna do too much of uh, an intro on this one because I'm sure the babbling will uh, ensue at some point, right? It, you'll see it. Uh, I'll just, at some point, I don't know what chapter I'll be in, maybe halfway, maybe at the end, maybe 10 minutes from now where I'll start explaining why exactly I wanted to start reading this book and why I feel like it's the perfect time for me to start reading this book. But for now, let's just get into it, okay? Uh, I I kind of have a general idea of of maybe what this book is gonna be about, um, but I'm, I'm gonna try my best to not allow that to, to really uh, throw me off too much because I really wanna take it in from almost a standpoint of like, I have no idea what I'm about to read. To the only thing I ever knew I wanted to be and family. Now it looks like there's gonna be some, some like handwritten stuff in here. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna be reading all of that, uh, mainly because it's actually kind of tough to read. So I, I don't know that I'll be doing that. This is not a traditional memoir. Yes, I tell stories from the past, but I have no interest in nostalgia, sentimentality, or the retirement most memoirs require. This is not an advice book either. Although I like preachers, I'm not here to preach and tell you what to do. This is an approach book. I'm here to share stories, insights, and philosophies that can be objectively understood, and if you choose, subjectively adopted by either changing your reality or changing how you see it. This is a playbook based on adventures in my life, adventures that have been significant, enlightening, and funny, sometimes because they were meant to be, but mostly because they didn't try to be. I'm an optimist by nature, and humor has been one of my greatest teachers. It has helped me deal with pain, loss, and lack of trust. I'm not perfect, no. I step in shit all the time and recognize it when I do. I've just learned how to scrape it off my boots and carry on. We all step in shit from time to time. We hit roadblocks, we fuck up, we get fucked, we get sick, we don't get what we want. We cross thousands of could have done betters and wish what wouldn't have happened in life. Stepping in shit is inevitable. So let's either see it as good luck or figure out how to do it less often. To life. I've been in this life for 50 years, trying to work out its riddle for 42 and keeping diaries of its clues to that riddle for the last 35. Notes about successes and failures, joys and sorrows, things that made me marvel, and things that made me laugh out loud. 35 years of realizing, remembering, recognizing, gathering, and jotting down what has moved or turned me on along the way. How to be fair, how to have less stress, how to have fun, how to hurt people less, how to get hurt less, how to be a good man, how to get what I want, how to have meaning in life, how to move more, to be a good man, not a nice guy, but a good man. I never wrote things down to remember. 
I always wrote things down so I could forget. The idea of revisiting my life and musing was a daunting one. I wasn't sure if I'd enjoy the company. Recently, I worked up the courage to sit down with those diaries and have a look at 35 years of writing about who I've been over the last 50. And you know what? I enjoyed myself more than I thought I would. I laughed, I cried, I realized I had remembered more than I expected and forgot less. What did I find? I found stories I witnessed and experienced, lessons I learned and forgot, poems, prayers, prescriptions, answers to questions I had reminders of questions I still have, affirmations for certain doubts, beliefs about what matters, theories on relativity, and a whole bunch of bumper stickers. I found consistent ways that I approached life that gave me more satisfaction at the time and still. I found a reliable theme, so I packed up those journals and took one-way ticket to solitary confinement in the desert, where I began writing What You Hold Now, an album, a record, a story of my life so far. Things I witnessed, dreamed, chased, gave, and received. Truth bombs that interrupted my space and time in ways I could not ignore. Contracts I made with myself, many of which I live up to, most of which I still pursue. These are my sights and scenes, felts and figured outs, cools and shamefuls, graces and truth, and beauty, beauties of brutality. Annotations, invitations, collaborations, and graduations. Getting away with, getting caught, and getting wet trying to dance between the raindrops. Rites of passage, all between or on the other side of persistence and letting go. On the way to science of satisfaction in this great experiment called life. Hopefully it's medicine that tastes good. A couple of aspirin instead of infirmary. A spaceship to Mars without needing your pilot's license. Going to church without having to be born again and laughing through the tears. It's a love letter to life. Man, uh, so far, seven pages in, right? I'm big on numbers, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, my birthday, five, seven. Um, so seven's always held a special place in my heart, like a lot of people, although now it's, you know, three, six, nine. Um, I'm just going to look at a couple of things here before I move on. Uh, he's got this right there. It says, the sole objective is the pursuit of the singular finish with only the arrival in sight. This is what brings us together. The sole objective is the pursuit of the singular finish with only the arrival in sight. This is what brings us together. It's fascinating when I listen to something like that, and we'll revisit that later on in this book to see if I feel differently, uh, because I may be misunderstanding what he's trying to say here. But for me, lately, what I've realized is that it's all about the process with no connection to the outcome, no emotional connection to whatever the outcome is, that it's all about right now in this process, like where I'm at. Am I good right now? That's all that matters. The outcome Right? It could blow up in my face. It could be a disaster. But if I enjoyed it the whole time, I'm okay with it. So I don't know. We'll revisit that one. A um, couple of things in this bottom part. I'm not even going to read that. It just, uh, it's, I don't know. It's whatever. Uh, again, like a little personal note here. Sometimes you got to go back to go forward. And I don't mean going back to reminisce or chase ghosts. I mean, go back to see where you came from, where you've been, how you got here. Uh, it, it says, I don't know, something Lincoln had 2014. I, I can't really make it out to be honest with you. Um, as I read that initially, I was gonna kind of go into brat mode and be like, uh, nah, bro, like you can't go forward looking in the rear view mirror. Um, but actually, uh, I, I was getting ahead of myself and I'm just admitting that that's how I think, right? Uh, I was getting ahead of myself and the truth is, uh, he's spot on, you know what I mean? Like, it's important to look back and go like, Hey, you know, I, I may not be where like I thought I was supposed to be, you know, I might be comparing myself to other people, but guess what? 
like a year ago, like I'm blowing that person away. Like that person's trying to catch up to me now. So, so yeah, look back and remind yourself of, of the miracles of how many times you overcame all the nonsense in your life that at the time you didn't think you could overcome. How did I get here? I've learned a few scars. Getting through this rodeo of humanity, I've been good at it. I've been not so good at it, and ultimately, I found some pleasure in all of it. Either way, here are some facts about me to help set the table. I am the youngest brother of three and the son of parents who were twice divorced and thrice married to each other. We grew up saying, I love you to each other. We meant it. I got whipped until my butt bled for putting, an, putting on a Cracker Jack tattoo when I was 10. When I was threatened to run away, when I first threatened to run away from home, my parents packed my bags for me. My dad wasn't there the day I was born. He called my mom and said, only thing I have to say is if it's a boy, don't name him Kelly. The only thing I ever knew I wanted to be was a father. I learned to swim when my mom threw me in the Liana River and I was either going to float off the rocky waterfall 30 yards downstream or make it to the bank. I made it to the bank. I was always the first one to wear out the knees and my tough skin jeans. For two years, I led the under 12 soccer league in red cards as a goalie. When I kept whining about my lone pair of tennis shoes being old and out of fashion, my mom told me, keep griping and I'll take you to meet the boy with no feet. I was blackmailed into having sex for the first time when I was 15. I was certain I was going to hell for premarital sex. Today, I am really certain that I hope that's not the case. I was molested by a man when I was 18 while knocked unconscious in the back of a van. I've done, wow, that honestly, like that kind of caught me off guard there. Um, like to just kind of seamlessly go into that. Uh, I was blackmailed into having sex for the first time when I was 15. I was certain I was going to hell for premarital sex. Today, I am merely certain that I hope that's not the case. I was molested by a man when I was 18 while knocked unconscious in the back of a van. I've done peyote in Real de Catorce, Mexico in a cage with a mountain lion. I don't even know what that means and I just completely butchered it, I apologize. I've had 78 stitches sewn in my forehead by a veterinarian. I've had four concussions from falling out of four trees, three of them on a full moon. I've bongoed naked until the cops arrested me. I resisted arrest. I applied to Duke, UT Austin, Southern Methodist, and Grambling for my college education. I got accepted to three out of four. I've never felt like a victim. I've got, I have a lot of, <clears throat> I have a lot of proof that this world is conspiring to make me happy. I've always gotten away with more in life than in my dreams. I've had more people give me poems that I did not know I wrote. I've been naive, evil, and cynic, but I am most fearless in my belief of, of my and mankind's benevolence and the common denominator of values among us. I believe the truth is only offensive when we're lying. I was raised on existential outlaw, outlaw logic a carnation of malaprops full of fictitious physics because if it wasn't true, it ought to be. There was nothing fictitious about love, though. The love was real, bloody sometimes, but never in question. I learned, on, I learned early on how to get relative, how to deal, how <clears throat> I learned resilience, consequences, responsibility, and how to work hard. I learned how to love, laugh, forgive, forget, play, and pray. I learned how to hustle, sell, charm, turn a tide, make a downfall my upfall, and spin a yarn. I learned how to navigate highs and lows, hugs and blows, assets and deficits, love songs and epithets, especially when faced with the inevitable. This is a story about getting relative with the inevitable. This is a story about green lights. This is the first 50 years of my life, 
of my resume so far on the way to my eulogy. Uh, again, I'm going to read this little note here. The arrival is inevitable. Death. A unanimous end. A unified destination. A noun without regard. Our eulogy, written, lived. The approach is relative. Life. A singular procession. Our personal journey. A verb with regard. Our resume. Write it. Live it. This is interesting. I'm, I'm digging it so far. This doesn't ne necessarily say like chapters yet, so. Huh. Um, let's see, we're at 15 minutes here. <clears throat> we're on page 13 now. Um, let's see what we got here. Okay, we'll just continue on until we get to what is listed as part one. I guess that would be chapter one, but you know, it's whatever. All right, so what's a green light? Green lights mean go, advance, carry on, continue. On the road, they are set up to give the flow of traffic the right of way. And when scheduled properly, more vehicles catch more green lights in succession. They say proceed. In our lives, they are an affirmation of our way. Their approval, support, praise, gifts, gas on our fires, attaboys and appetites, their cash money, birth, springtime, health, success, joy, sustainability, innocence, and fresh starts. We love green lights. They don't interfere with our direction. They're easy. They're a shoeless summer. They say yes and give us what we want. Green lights can also be disguised as yellow and red lights, a caution, a detour, a thoughtful pause, an interruption, a disagreement, indigestion, indige indigestion, a deep uh, sickness and pain, a full stop, a jackknife, an intervention, failure, suffering, a slap in the face, death. We don't like yellow and red lights. They slow us down or stop our flow. They're hard. They're a shoeless winner. They say no, but sometimes give us what we need. Catching green lights is about skill intent, context, consideration, endurance, anticipation, resilience, speed, and discipline. We can catch more green lights by simply identifying where the red lights are in our life and then changing course to hit fewer of them. We can also earn green lights, engineer and design for them. We can create more and schedule them in our future. A path of least resistance, through force of will, hard work, and choices we make, we can be responsible for green lights. Catching green lights is also about timing, the world's timing, and ours. When we are in the zone, on the frequency, and with the flow, we can catch green lights by sheer luck, because we are in the right place at the right time. Catching more of them in our future can be about intuition, karma, and fortune. Sometimes catching green lights is about fate. Navigating the Autobahn of life in the best way possible is about getting relative with the inevitable at the right time. The inevitability, the inevitability <laughs> of a situation is not relative. When we accept the outcome of a given situation as inevitable, then, we, then how we choose to deal with it is relative. We either persist and continue in our present pursuit of desired result, pivot and take a new tack to get it, or concede altogether and tally one up for fate. We push on, call an audible, or wave the white flag and live to fight another day. The secret to our satisfaction lies in which one of these, which one of these we choose to do when. This is the art of living. I believe, I just thought about that L-L-V-I-N-G. Anyway, uh, whatever. Um, I believe everything we do in life is part of a plan. Sometimes the plan goes on in, intended, and sometimes it doesn't. That's part of the plan. Realizing this is a green light in itself. The problem we face today eventually turn the problems we face today. Was up. I already said in the video. I'm not really gonna stop whenever I get interrupted. I love you. Yeah, these little LeBrons I've only worn like twice, but it'd be like that it goes with the jersey. Anyway. Uh, the problems we face today eventually turn into blessings in the rearview mirror of life. In time, yesterday's red lights 
head us to the green light, to a green light. All destruction eventually leads to construction. All death eventually leads to birth. All pain eventually leads to pleasure. In this life or the next, what goes down will come up. It's a matter of how we see the challenge in front of us and how we engage with it. Persist, pivot, or concede. It's up to us, our choice every time. This is a book about how to catch more yeses in a world full of no's and how to recognize them when a no might actually be a yes. This is a book about catching green lights and realizing that the yellows and reds eventually turn green. Green lights, by design and on purpose. Good luck. Uh, a little snippet here. If all that I would want to do would be to sit and talk to you, would you listen? Matthew McConaughey, age 12. That's pretty dope. Um, I, I gotta say, you know, um, I'm gonna stop here before I move into part one, but you know, one of the things that stood out to me uh, when we're talking about this, because I, I kind of had a feeling that catching green lights was gonna be that type of message, right? That like, once you get into that flow state, it's easier to stay in the flow state. Like when you're on that path of green lights, it just feels like everyone is hitting for you. Like you're never catching any yellows or reds. Uh, but what he's saying there is that some of the most impactful decisions we can make are just being able to recognize when there's a yellow or a red light ahead and avoid it. You know, um, I could speak to all the men in this world that know exactly what I'm talking about when I say like there are, you know, red lights, red flags, whatever you want to call them. There are certain things that you see and you're like, yo, like I know better. Now, the challenge is, is when you, you know, when you fall in love with somebody and you care about them and now you have a vested interest in them. Right. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, I'm just saying, I, I understood what he was talking about there when he's talking about avoiding red lights might be just as big or even a bigger deal in my mind uh, than catching the green lights. You know what I'm saying? It's like the faster you can pivot and move away from a bad situation, the quicker you're gonna get into a good situation. And I can speak from experience because you know, I've spent a lot of time in my life in situations where it was like, I was just beating my head against the wall. Like I should have known better. Like, okay, like, look, we need to move away from this. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a stubborn individual that just has to, you know, go through it in order to realize that, you know, it's not meant to be. Uh, but, but I'm enjoying this so far. I uh, kind of figured, you know, that was going to be the message, but I have a feeling that this is going to be solid. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things, you know, when I read the last book, I did it with just this gut instinct to just do it for what reason I have no idea. Although going through 2023 right now and the fact that most of America is going to be literally like completely in debt, like maxed out on their credit card debt or completely out of their savings by January. Uh, that leads me to believe that I did read it indeed for a reason, whether I applied that in my life and took advantage of the wisdom that I gained from it. That's a whole nother story because I'm right along with everybody else here in 2023. I might look fabulous, but you know, I'm struggling like everybody else, but we're going to get through it. That's the key. Um, but, but I, I went to go pick up food today. I, I went to the mall and I, I don't even really go to the mall too much, but, but there's a uh, books a million there. And, uh, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm just gonna walk in here and just take a look. And for some reason, I instantly thought of this book, Green Lights. Uh, it just came to my mind. I remembered uh, seeing an interview with him, you know, I don't know, a year or two ago, and he was talking about it. It was right when it was first released. And I just felt it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm big on like, once you get in that flow, like you're in it, you know what I mean? It's like when Steph Curry's just dropping bucket after bucket after bucket, like he's just got that stupid faith that it's gonna go in every time he throws it up. And when you talk to people who have good luck, that's what they always say. Like, oh, I always get good parking spots. Oh, I always, girls always approach me. Oh, I always get the promotion. I like, there's a reason why. And there's a reason why the person that says I'm always sick is always sick. The person that says I always got bad luck is always got bad luck. The person that says woe is me all the fucking time, that's a reason why this shit keeps happening. And it really fucking sucks 
when it's somebody in your life that you love and you know if they just switch it up a little bit and stop feeling so damn sorry for themselves that it wouldn't be that way but uh i apologize i didn't mean to go down that road but this book i, I feel like it's gonna hit so we'll continue on with it and um i will see y'all in part one all right peace